Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you had a great day. There is a concern of mine, I think many of you probably have, towards this new ZR1, when it is going to be another supercar Corvette where it takes the previous Corvette Z06 and improves upon it even more. Well, what problems actually arise from that? When you look at the competitor cars out there from Porsche, also Lamborghini, these cars a lot of the performance ones start at about $200,000. Even the McLaren Artura is around 200, I think it's, it's mid 200,000s now. If this ZR1 baselines what we had off the Z06 and improves upon it, it's definitely going to be a more expensive vehicle. Therefore, if we could get my car to be as expensive as it is, and you can get other versions even more expensive by paying for the uh, convertible option, that automatically boosts your cost. Was it $8,000? It's a significant price to get the hardtop convertible. I really do like the convertibles. Don't get me wrong. They're fantastic. Anyways, every year we're also seeing inflation. Prices are going up all across the board. I recently saw how a Stingray is into the uh, 70s now to buy MSRP wise. I remember back in the day, it was $59,995 to buy a C8 Stingray. If we look at the ZR1, I think it's fair to conclude we're gonna have an over $200,000 Corvette over the horizon based off how you build it. If there's going to be track options, carbon fiber wheels and more, carbon interior options, etc., it's probably going to get up there. Then you are 100% in the same price tier, same price category as the greatest supercars out there from the greatest automotive companies out there. What can Chevy do to really command that price point. Yes, I know the performance of this car will be on par, if not faster than a majority of supercars out there within its price tier. However, I don't think performance alone is what sells cars. And I know that sounds maybe a bit dumb, Austin, or it sounds kind of obvious. Here, let me explain. When people go to buy a Porsche Turbo S or a Lamborghini Huracan, let's look at the Huracan first. They're not buying it for the fastest supercar on the market. They're not buying it to be the fastest guy at the track or girl at the track. They're not buying it to be the fastest owner with a Lamborghini on the drag strip. They're buying it because they love the performance, they love the emotion, they love the styling, and most of all, I think, they appreciate what the brand stands for. The brand Lamborghini, when you look at these cars, they're hand-built supercars with state-of-the-art paint jobs, incredibly bespoke interiors, custom points all over the vehicle that are not shared with any other car out there. There is no sixty to $70,000 baseline Lamborghini which has over 100,000 of them on the street right now driving. There isn't. For the Corvette ZR1, there's going to be 100,000 Stingrays with the same interior technology and design as you. I love the Corvette. I love the C8 Stingray. I think they're fantastic cars. I think the interior is top notch. I would actually buy a Stingray right now and own one just to drive it around because that's how much I love it. I've owned uh, two Stingrays, the C8R and the standard one. I put over 20 something thousand miles on my Stingray. I tracked it nonstop. It's an incredible car. The interior technology, it's fantastic. But what I'm talking about here is the thought process behind these buyers who want fine automobiles or the special watches. You know, they're buying their Rolexes and other special watches because they don't want the Apple watch. They don't want the standardized watch. I do believe the supercar buyer in this market segment thinks a little bit like that at least. They want something that is unique and different. They don't want to be the same as everybody else. I just believe when people look to buy a $200,000 ZR1, they're going to consider how it comes off the same assembly line as Corvettes that cost one third the price, if not maybe even less depending on the spec. What do you think that does to buyers? Here is the solution of this crisis. All Chevrolet has to do is change the car enough where people look at it, they don't think Stingray. They don't think standard Z06. They, they think of it as something more. 
When you look at the interior of the Z06, I love how they added all these features of a full carbon fiber cockpit interior with the massive center beam and the floating accents everywhere. I thought that was a really cool option. It was $5,000. That's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was really cool to have inside the Corvette. In my opinion, when Chevrolet announces this vehicle, I hope that they try extra hard with creating an interior which symbolizes the supercar that it is, the status, the achieving benchmark it's going to represent. Because if the interior is the exact same and nothing's really changed inside, I, I do think buyers will look at it with the framework of mine going, ah, oh, it's so cool, but I wish they did something in here, right? What we're seeing with Corvette Z06s right now is that they're mass producing them almost in the same amount of capacity as C7 Z06s. It's not really holding out too well from what I've noticed because the market has been going down a lot. There's hundreds of Z06s for sale used online. I question myself going, how are there hundreds of used Corvette Z06s for sale online when there's only a handful of used dark horse Ford Mustangs for sale, which cost seventy dollars to $80,000? It doesn't make much sense to me. How can there be hundreds of this six-figure Corvette that's special and hard to get, presumably, and this dark horse is a Mustang GT variant, which costs a lot less and they're harder to find. I don't understand that. The problem with maximizing economies of scale, maximizing how many of a car you can make is over time, they, they begin to get subjected to moments like this, where you're seeing them for sale online for a fraction of what people pay for years ago. Making it more limited, like the C7 ZR1, will help the car dramatically. The C7 ZR1 holds its value very well. It's an incredible automobile. It's the pinnacle C7, you know, front engine, front mid-engine Corvette. It's incredible. If Chevrolet makes this ZR1 as expensive as we think it's going to be, having five to 6,000 of a year will not go over well because other brands don't do that either. And there's a reason why the audience, the bracket, is only so big. You can't mass produce, let's say, a Camry at that price point. There'll be so many of them that the demand is way down here, the supply is way up here, the prices will go all the way down to equalize with demand. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Anyways, those are my thoughts regarding a crisis that could happen with the ZR1. I still want to get it. I can't wait for this car. I know the team is fantastic. Hope you enjoyed this studio desk update video. I love making these style videos alongside our track test reviews and more. Please subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. And while you do that, hit the notification bell as you update with all the new videos coming out. I'll see you in the next episode.